terribly nice to be here this evening. Lovely to see you all. You know, I, my name is Dame Beatrice. I'm, I've just been in Canada a short while, and to be quite frankly, I, I really didn't intend to be here tonight. I, I thought I would be in Ottawa, you see. You see, what happened was, your Prime Minister, Steve, I call him Steve, he called me and he said, B. I let him call me B. I said, yes, yes, Steve. He said, would you mind coming and giving me a hand? I'm having a real trouble with my Kyoto Accord. And I said, oh, Prime Minister, I don't know the first thing about automobiles. I really don't. I don't. He said, look, B, come and have supper anyway. So I said, oh. Quite, quite that. Nice. You know, your Prime Minister does love his vittles. <laughs> he reminds me of a slightly pudgy Ken doll, you know. <laughs> very nice man, very nice man. I was looking forward to being there this evening so I could masticate with your Prime Minister. <laughs> I said, masticate, you've got a filthy mind, man, I must say. Anyway, as it would, my man was going to take me to my coach. I have a, I have a coach, very posh, very posh coach. I have a large screen TV, a jacuzzi, an all-male staff, don't you know? <laughs> well, would you, he put me on the wrong bloody bus. And next thing I know, we're driving in some direction. You do have a lot of trees up here, you know. <laughs> a lot of trees. I had no idea where we were. Well, we came in uh, through your French section. We came up Gelert Road. <laughs> <laughs> and next thing I know, we're, we're coming by a quaint, a quaint 18th century ruin called Inglesby. <laughs> You mean people actually live there? <laughs> Very nice place, I'm sure. And then we pass by this immense lake. It's Kishag, Kishag, Kishag. Oh, that's a bloody awful cough you've got. <laughs> Take care. Of it. Anyway, I said to the bus driver, look, we're coming into town. I'd like to go to some place that uh, uh, is, is appropriate to, to the occasion. I said, you know, something, something that seems. Uh, uh, fluttery of the flag and all that sort of thing. And he said, all right. And he took me to the Silver Maple Motel. <laughs> and I, of course, I'm staying in the Royal Suite, as you might imagine. Uh, the, have you ever stayed in the Royal Suite at the Silver Maple? Oh, it's very nice. They change the sheets every two weeks. <laughs> it's not so bad, you know. It's not so bad. So we went out for supper. I called a taxi. And uh, he was a very grumpy be man, I must say. <laughs> Very grumpy man, and he had a, certainly had an odor about him. Anyway, we went over to the Northwood Hotel. He recommended that. And I had something called Squirrel Rouge, I believe it was. I don't know what it was. It was rather gritty, anyway. But when I got there, I'd never seen so many plaid shirts in my whole life. <laughs> I thought it was a meeting of the clan, for God's sake. <laughs> you like the outfit? Do you Hell like yeah. the outfit? Of course you do, of course you do. Yes, people around the world just love the way I dress, and I, I hope there's a fashion tip here for you this evening. Take it free of charge. I'm here, by the way, stag. Yes, I'm all by myself. I had to leave Harold at home. Poor love is, is not well. And to be quite honest, he makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm having a very, very nice time visiting him. Oh, I met a Murray Fairy. <laughs> He's quite a nice man, isn't he? It doesn't smile a lot. I don't know why. Well, of course, once I learned he was a warden of the county, I didn't realize this was a penal colony. <laughs> I suppose you're all on night parole, are you? Having a nice time, I trust. Yes. yes. Um, oh, uh, 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 Michael, Michael, my boy. Yep. Oh. oh, isn't he a lovely lad? He's such a cute little boy. <laughs> you have such nice skin as well. You really. Did you know, Michael, that your skin is the largest organ of your body? Did you know that? 
No, you didn't. I didn't know that. But I'm telling you, one day I would like to put my largest organ next to your largest organ. <laughs> It's all right. He'll grow into it. <laughs> all right. A little, a little Christmas song very quickly. <clears throat> Chipmunks roasting <laughs> on an open fire. Hot sauce dripping from their toes. Yuletide squirrels fresh filleted by the choir. They poked hot skewers through their nose. <laughs> Everybody knows some pepper and a garlic clove help to make them seasoned rice. <laughs> Tiny rats with a crisp golden coat will really hit the spot tonight. <laughs> and now when Santa sees his tray, there'll be some homemade chipmunk jerky for his <laughs> And every hungry child is gonna spy to see if chipmunks really sing when they cry. <laughs> and so I'm brushing on some honey glaze to keep them crisp and juicy too. Let's hope they get served many times, many ways. Tasty chipmunks. Good food. I should point out that these lyrics were provided by Melissa Stevens. <laughs> She obviously has a local take on Christmas characters. Speaking of local, I was reading your newspapers, and you do have a lot of things going on here. Not just trees. You do have a lot of trees, don't you? Yes. I noticed that one Carl Dixon, I understand, has done a brand new CD. And uh, uh, I understand that Carl may be performing here this evening as well. Should be quite a thrill. Uh, Carl calls his new CD, he's a very, very creative man, he calls it Snow. <laughs> Snow. I just wonder how long it took to invent that. <laughs> Probably has a song called Snow. But, but there is an idea here. Now, uh, if you think about it, this could be a whole series of CDs. Uh, come spring, we'll have mud. <laughs> and then in the summer, we could have an ode to the lakes of Halliburton County uh, called algae. <laughs> oh, what's it all about? Algae. <laughs> I can see it now. Oh, and I must compliment you on your constabulary. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Here at the Christmas season, you can go out, you can get proper pissed, and then you can call the ride program. I love it. Bless their hearts. They never do that back home, you know. Never do it. And I've been listening to your community radio station as well. Canoe FM is it's not bad, you know. The uh, young man on in the morning, he sounds like quite a hearty young <laughs> I'm talking about Sean Chamberlain. Yes, yes. I'm going to do some shopping while we're here. I understand you have a uh, shopping mall in a lovely place called West Guildford. <laughs> I've been there, but I'm looking forward to it. It should be very, very nice. It sounds very royal, you know. And I'm very, very close to the royals. You should know that. Oh, yes, I am. They, they call me MTV. They do. Yes, they do. Uh, as a matter of fact, Kate. It uh, takes a lot of fashion clues from your story. And poor girl can really use it, I tell you. She's so thin. I don't know how those bandy little legs hold up her body, you know. She needs a couple of good pork pies. You know, the, the royal family, they're renting out rooms in the castle during the Olympic Games. Isn't that amazing? Yes, the Queen is doing that. Very hard times, you know, these economic times. And, and if you pay a little extra, you can get a lady in waiting. So I'm going to rent a suite, and I'm going to get a footman who can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to put my candy cane on the tree, if you may. If you may, you can watch me if you want. <laughs> so, X-rated, but it's lovely. 
<laughs> and I would like that to be for Dorothy, Bernie, Alan, and Margaret, because they would have loved this evening. Now, I really must toddle on. Uh, this has been quite lovely. Uh, maybe after the, uh, the intermission, I understand you have an intermission, uh, and then there'll be a breakfast after the second half. <laughs> I tell you what, uh, at the intermission, at the intermission, why don't, if you would like some fashion tips, maybe some autographs, some pictures, that would be nice too, and we'll have a glass of wine at the same time. You can't have wine, can't you? Uh, oh, so it is the 18th century. <laughs> no, very good. I have to go now because the Prime Minister gave me word just before I came on at saying that he had arranged for that really cute young fellow, Peter McKay, to send a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> very good.